than we do. So if we don't oppress, if we don't oppress them, they will overtake us. And that's how they suppress them because they were so afraid of what they could do, which really wasn't anything I don't believe that children of Israel were thinking about. But they were so afraid, and that's why they killed the babies and yep. tried to, what is it when it's called, trying to keep the population at a certain place? Population control. Population yeah. control, yeah. yes. And so that's why it went that way. So they're so afraid. And like you said about Canada, you know, they are so afraid of mm -hmm. the people. And they don't want Jesus preached because they have a strong spirit of homosexuality that mm -hmm. that whole thing there yeah. that mm -hmm. so Satan's got his claws in Canada. It's just like his tentacles are in Canada to really try to destroy that. And so when they do something like that, then okay, then well, who's the problem next? The United States. But we're already so close to that. Yes. So it's it's like we have to really be praying as a body of Christ. We have to be praying about that, praying against it, and just saying, no, this is not going to happen. It's, it's, it's very, uh, I, I'll say it like this. It's like we are repeating Egypt in modern times. <coughs> mm -hmm. The government really knows, it's probably kicking me off with it. Though. It already has twice. Uh, okay. You work in it. The, <laughs> the government knows. How powerful the church is. Right. They know. Right. They, they know. They know. They know. Mm -hmm. Even the enemy knows the power of God. That's why he's threatened. Mm -hmm. That's why he's stop. trying to fight. So just like Pharaoh, he, they're, they're trying to keep us under their thumb. They, we cannot get any larger. We cannot um, usurp their authority. We can't do this. We can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can. We can. Mm -hmm. so just like you said. If during that time, if all the churches had unified and said, well, if they lock one of us up, they're going to have to we'll lock all of us up. Right. We, right. We're not doing anything that is against the law. We're, we're not uh, harming anyone. We are coming together instead of standing on your word, we're standing on the word of the Lord. Yes. And that's going to prevail. Regardless of what you do to us, what you say to us, what you say that we can or can't do, right. the word is going to prevail. Right. Right. So, um, with that, Jesus said, I know the blasphemy of them that say that they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of of Satan. So here <laughs> you see that, of course, we talk about wolves and sheep clothing. Just because that somebody says Lord, Lord, does not mean they are a saved, filled, sanctified, Holy Ghost um, on their way to heaven. Right. That's right. They're just not. And I'll tell you why I know that. Because <laughs> even. Um, even Satan tried to use the word. Mm -hmm. And if the enemy knows the word, just because the enemy knows the word, is his place going to be in heaven? No. no. He had his chance. He got kicked out. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know that because there are people who claim, and here's another reason. We have, and we've experienced, and I'm sure we all have to, a experience it over the years where someone can come into church, maybe they're new, or maybe they've been there a while, but you can tell when the Holy Spirit is on them or when it's them. Now, I will say, first and foremost, you've got to be careful, both sides, you've got to be careful that you're not doing what you're doing as a show. But you also got to be careful. You're not judging that person for worshiping either. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important judge yourself before you judge somebody else. Mm -hmm. Fix you before you fix the world. Mm -hmm. And so there's a fine line there because we know.
know that the enemy would love and and has placed decoys in. What is his purpose? To come into the church. To divide and separate. Divide and conquer. Um, and, you know, it, it's just like uh, we've, we've said before that when we talk about certain churches or we say other churches. We don't call churches by name. Because that's God. That's between them God. We're saying collectively as a whole, including our church. If we are not following the word of God, then it needs correcting. Otherwise, the judgment, as we'll see, the judgment of God is going to come down on these churches. Right. Because judgment begins in the house of God. So, um, when we, when we think about the, the churches, you know, across the community, across the state, across the nation, if we have that unity, and it be the unity that we serve one Lord, we may be a body of a community church, we may be a so-and-so church, whatever, man-separated uh, denominations. Otherwise, denominations would be in the Bible. But there's a reason why there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. If we're all on the same team, why are we fighting against one another? Why is it a competition of whose church has more and who's and who doesn't? Because I look at it this way. And this is what I, I have been interacting with people as they come into the church. I've tried my best to tell them. You know, the, when we meet new people, some will say, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if this is where I'm going to end up, but I'm, I'm searching. And what I usually tell them is, okay, great. It's, I, I'm glad that you're searching. Pray about where you go. We would love to have you here, but more importantly, we want you where God wants you. Right. Because where God has for you is where you're going to grow, where you're going to be used. Because everything should be for His glory anyway. Amen. Whether it's here, church across the street, church down the road, whatever. But what I'm telling you about the churches is you've got to be prayerful not only where you go, but who you listen to. All right. Because as, as Jesus told the, um, the church of Smyrna, I know those who have mocked the Holy Spirit. They come in because they're Jews. They come in appearing to be uh, my children, and they're not. Have you ever met somebody and you thought they were one way and no? It's just their mask came off and it exposed who they really were. Um, it says, let me see. Let me read this to you first. Because, again, Jesus, he didn't hold back. He just called it for what he it was. Did. He called you for what you oh, are. <laughs> he didn't just right. cook anything. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 23 and 27 <coughs> said that Jesus called the scribes and the Pharisees a bunch of hypocrites, mm -hmm. a bunch of vipers. You, you, you go and through and through and and your, you, your, your outward appearance is just grand. Mm -hmm. But the inwardness is as dark <laughs> as night. Uh, he, even, he called them whited walls. Clean on the outside, filthy on the inside. He said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You come from a generation of vipers. That's a little <laughs> To be called a hypocrite, to be called viper. Uh, I mean, he was pretty much saying, "You snake, you right. Think, right. you're not full. You may fool all me, but you're not fooling me. You have it together on the outside, but on the inside, you're filthy." Mm -hmm. Devil poison. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus was telling the church of Smyrna. I know what you've had to endure from these people. These people that appear to to be godly, but are the synagogue of Satan. I mean, that's just... Uh, it's, there's no, there's no word. Okay, uh, can't get confused with that. Yeah, I, I mean, just, let's just say we would not want Jesus to talk to us that way. So we don't need to give him reason to. Right? <laughs> don't give him reason to talk to us. 
we have had in in church where certain things would happen and they wanted to play certain music and, and all this and it's like uh uh. This ain't that church. That's right. We're not we are not condemning your heart. But if this place is a place of God, he is holy, so therefore we're gonna be holy. Amen. If that hurts your feelings, I'm sorry. Take it up with the Lord. But we've got to we've got to examine ourselves that the world is not creeping in to the church. If anything should be creeping, it should be the church and the Holy Spirit and the gospel creeping out to the world, not the not the other way around. Um, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 22 and 23, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy right. name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you Word. that work iniquity. Yes. <laughs> Again, <laughs> he lays it out there black and white. You can say all these things. You can do everything. But if your inward man is not clean before me, I'm going to say depart from me. You did. You had no clue who I was. Because if we really understood who God is, that change on the inside, it will have to happen. Yes. Not only does it have to happen, we will want it to happen. That's yes. right. Well, that, that verse that you just brought up, there's to me at least, there's like a subtlety to it when you stop to think about it, they are doing all these things. And we're supposed to be fruit inspectors. Hey, that's good fruit. They're doing yeah. what God wants us to. But it's the motivation behind it, and it is so easy. I've fallen into it. I've seen so many people falling into it. I love God. He's amazing. I want to make Him happy. I'm going to go do some good things. And then this slow shift mm -hmm. to I'm doing good things. And you don't even realize that you've gotten off the path of I'm doing these things because I love God. It just becomes I'm doing these things because I'm doing these things. And then you get to this point and you're like, what yeah. am I doing? I've lost complete track of my relationship yeah. with him. And you got to come back yes. and be like, man, I'm sorry. Yes. It's even, I'll, I'll put it in an example that most of us, if not all of us, can relate to. Anybody ever been hurt in church? Huh? Hurt in church? Mm -hmm. you, you didn't understand why and, you know, um, some of us may have built up a bitterness and we think that that gives us a right to turn and live like the world again. It does. It does. It does. Because it was man that hurt you, not God. Right. God's law still, it's, it still remains. It's still the same. So, uh, when we, when we, uh, you know, get hurt in church or we can come across people that they do whatever. That does not give you the right to act like the manipulations that we talked about last week. You know God, you love God, but it gives you a blank check to sin. That's not how God works. That is, however, how the devil works. And he will use Anyone and everyone and anything to cause that division to where your heart and your mind is not thinking straight. And you, that's why when we say from the altar, you got anything in your heart, hit this altar. Because each day that you carry it is each day that Satan robs you of where you're supposed to be. In God's that's right. And if nothing else, you may be mad at the hornet's nest with somebody else. But you should be even more mad at the enemy. That's yes. right. Yes. That should always He's prevail yes. over because he is the 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 father of confusion. He's the father of lies. He's the, the father of anything bad. That that's where it's that's where the blame lies. That's right. You gotta think too. He's the father of all lies. He was bold enough to speak to Jesus, the Word Himself, yes. and try to twist the Word and confuse yes. Him with His His own words. Like yes. that's how bold He is, and that's why it's so important to study. 
and to know the word because you can take stuff out of context yes. so easily and get so far off base That's you don't true. even know how you got turned around in that That's direction. So true. Yeah. And you know, there, I'll even go as far as to say this. You may be somebody who only reads the chapters of the books that are so pleasant. <laughs> oh, blessed is the Lord and I'm I'm more than an overcomer and the Lord is good this day. And they won't bother reading the chapters that say if you harbor anything in your heart, right. you, you're, you, you put separation but between all that, that I have for you. You, yep. you know, you've got to do it my way. You've got to seek me with all of your heart, yes. all your soul, all your mind. Don't you know that when it says seek me with all your heart, that means the damage, the bruise, every hidden part of your heart. Because when you seek him with what you're trying to hide from somebody else, he's going to fix it. He's going to expose it and say, you know that those people that hurt you, regardless of why they hurt you, you need to let that junk go. Free that part of your heart up so that I can fill it with something good. Otherwise, it's going to remain dark. It's going to remain damaged and it goes contrary to my word. You're not sick of me with all, my, all of your heart. Only the parts that you are comfortable with. It makes me think of like, um, I don't know which property said, eat the whole road. And when I look at the Bible, it's like, you can take all these pages and spread it out. It just still wouldn't even contain all that Jesus did, all that he said when he walked the face of this earth. But for me, it's like, how can you just accept one part and be good with one part and then reject the other? Yeah. For me, because I love truth and I really want to be balanced in the Lord, I have to take it all. And everything in this world is all good. Yeah. It's not bad at all. So we can't take only the part that appeals to us or pleases us. We have to get the part that would just get up under your skin, step on your toes and make you want to Okay, 
Church of Smyrna. These people, they, they are not rich in things the world would classify as wealth. Because otherwise, Jesus would have said, I know your poverty. Their wealth was spiritual things. That's why he said, but thou art rich. Yes. Because you can own everything in the world and still go to hell. And you ain't got nothing to your name. Yes. You can't yes. take it with you when you go. That's right. That's right. You're, you need to when, just burn anyway. Uh, when, you reach, <laughs> when you reach heaven, the requirement is not only how much is in your bank account at the time you drew your last breath. Now that's that's no matter. It's gonna be how number one, did you love me and did you accept me as your savior? Right. How did you love? How did you how did you um you know how many did you lead to me? How many times did you have fellowship with me? Um, the church of Smyrna, they were wealthy in spiritual things. Their treasure that they were seeking was eternal and not temporary. It was eternal. That's why if, if we out of these seven churches, if we could be like any church, it should be like the church of Smyrna. They hunger after not the wealth of the world. I'm not saying that it's bad to have wealth. You, like I said, money's not evil because you got to have it to pay bills. <laughs> and, and to eat and live and survive. But the love of it, what drives you, is the root of all evil. So if we are more like the church of Smyrna, that even though material things come and go, but our hunger for God remains. Yes. And it's, it's, that's what drives us. Why do you think this church was persecuted? <laughs> Nothing can stop them. Think, think of, uh, like I go back, think of if we said, no, we're not living this. We're not, we're not, uh, we're not abiding by it. This is crazy. It goes against the very word of God. It goes against what we believe in. Without fear. Imagine how we would, the, how the church would be seen by the world. If we're expected to be a city on a hill, we're gonna have to show some light. We're gonna, we can't be dark, or otherwise we're just darkness in the rest of the world. But Jesus did say, "Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer." Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, here Jesus is saying, don't fear what these people are going to do to you. You're going to, some of us going to be thrown in prison. I know right now, if somebody <laughs> were to tell many of us, you think you'd be thrown in jail. We would have the biggest pity party, easy fit, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going <laughs> to that place. But when you think of deny who you serve or go to jail, you better put me in orange <laughs> yeah, and a uh, strap suit, whatever it is nowadays, and put me behind bars. Because imagine what would happen if Jesus denied us. <laughs> that, that, that's all that should bring through your ears. When you're put in a situation to where somebody is asking you something uncomfortable or something that is life threatening or you know it's like what do I do? Most of us would don't really know what we would do until we're put in that position. We could say all day long, oh yeah, I wouldn't deny my Lord. Peter said the same thing. I'm not going to deny you, oh yes you are. <laughs> I know your filthy heart. You're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. But redemption is always in the plan of God. Because Peter was the one, he said, upon this rock I'm going to build my church. Peter was the one that stood up after denying Jesus three times. He stood up on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we have to remember.
Um, if we are in God's army, like we say we are, we must be willing to stand for what is right even unto death. Now, it's under the, it's those last two words that people have a problem with. I love them. I ain't got one. I'm not going to put my family in, in harm. But I'm, I'm not. I can't because I got this. I, I can't um, do it unto death. Or is God asking any of us to die right now for him? He's just saying, will you? It becomes good. Imagine if, if Jesus went before the Sanhedrin court, before Pontius Pilate. They gave him opportunity to explain. What if he said, you know what? I know their hearts. They're going to deny me anyway. I'm not going to the cross. I'm not going to them today. The weather's not too good. The heat's too hot. I'm already thirsty. And I know that once I'm up there, y'all, the bunch of hypocrites are going to feed me better. So, no, I'm not going to that cross for you today. My point is, how many excuses, no matter how legitimate, <laughs> how small, how big, how many excuses do we use to say, uh, I'm, not, I'm not showing my Christianity today. I'm not serving God today. I'm not praying. I'm not reading my Bible. I just, I'm not feeling it today. The church of Smyrna had it together. Because if you notice, Smyrna and the church of Philadelphia were the only two churches that Jesus didn't condemn. The others, we'll see, he commended them for their works. And then, but I have somewhat against you. Smarter, he didn't, he didn't say that. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of the second death. Talking about the, the, the death associated with hell. I mean, he didn't say, I have somewhat against you. Uh, he said, I know that, that you're suffering. I know all about your suffering. But, he said that you must stay faithful until the end. Because if you're faithful <coughs> until the end, great will be your reward. Yes. yes. That, that's really what the big picture is. Great will be your reward if you endure to the end. It is harder and harder to be a Christian. Would you agree with that? Even convincing someone to be a Christian is harder and harder. And it's even more difficult to be a minister. Why? Because you, it's not for the faint <laughs> of heart. And if, if other things, if you're not called, you just up here self-appointed, I mean, I, I, I can tell you, I... You can spot a self-appointed minister a mile away. God does not walk with them. They, or, you know, maybe God does. I shouldn't say that. God walks with everyone. But you can tell who's anointed, who's, who he has appointed, and who's self-appointed. Um, and... I mean, the Bible even says um, they that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof of such turn away. That's why there's some people going, hey, because my Bible says, have no dealings with them. Right. Don't be rubbing elbows at the dinner table with them. Right. Not that they can't become saved and converted, they, they can be. But we know that if you. The longer you, I put it this way. I heard okay. it. I heard it say this way. <laughs> you lay down with dogs, you're gonna go wake up with fleas. Yeah. <laughs> if you pass by, you're not gonna get any fleas on you. If you keep your distance, you're not gonna get. But if you lay down with them, yes. Day after day after day, guess what? You're gonna smell like them. You're gonna act like them, and you're gonna have to. 
Now, one more thing before we, we spray it is the church is under attack of the devil. Did you agree with that? Yes. If your church is not under attack, check why. We must be a threat to the enemy before we are attacked. If you're not attacked, if the church is saying, oh yeah, everybody's doing good, and we're just growing by leaps and bounds, and we're doing this, and we have these problems, and we're doing you're not being attacked? From such it's turned away, because there's no threat to them. Um, so many churches are being infiltrated by the world that Satan is not even bothering them. Now that seems kind of odd. You, you think every church is going to be against Satan. They say it. But if they're operating like the world, and, and, and Satan is running them up in the world, then... There's no threat because there's no power. Mm -hmm. There's no anointing to de that destroys every yoke. That's why I believe, I believe again, the word judgment begins in the house of God. When we start seeing, we're already starting to hear, but when we really start seeing, boom, that church is closed, boom, that church, you, you better start getting in this word to, to know, okay, Judgment is beginning at the house of God. After it infiltrates the house of God, guess where it's going to go to next? The world. It, it's going to flush out. It's going to cleanse. Um, one thing that I wanted to, to make mention is... That's for next week. Next week, we will talk about the, the church of Pergamos. Pergamos? That's what it is. And there's some interesting things that I found out that is being held today and has been. And we've just been kept them. Symbols, statues, all these different things. We just, oh yeah, we've just been so passive about them. It's quite um, amazing how <laughs> we can accept the things that are really coming and slapping God right in the face. And the church is being silent about it. But again, there's, um, what's the saying, there's safety in numbers. If, if the church has actually got a backbone, and said, oh, we're, not, we, we're not standing for this. This is this country was founded on the principles of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're taking our country back. Yes. Otherwise, there would have been no reason for is it Second Chronicles seven fourteen or is it First Chronicles one of the Chronicles. If my people, called by my name. the church, yeah. called by my name, will humble themselves right. and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will heal from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. But we're not reaching out to them. We're, if we're reaching out to them, we're ignoring the elephant in the room. And remember, if God said, seek me with all your heart, even the things that are the symbols, the statues that are being put up everywhere, pray those things down. That's it. That's what we have to do. Not just even if the church is not coming together, we as the members can join together and pray yep. against this stuff and call it down to the ground because it's like that whole Babylonian system is creeping in and like they want to usher in the Antichrist spirit. That's really what it yep. is. 